Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, my name is Gavin, I'm at Proby Communications and I'm joined this afternoon by Stuart Hibbard who's the Sales Director of Castell in the UK. Um, what we're going to talk about today is the advantages of using Castell intercoms in your installs. Good afternoon everybody. Uh, as Gavin's just said, uh, I'm Stuart Hibbard, the Sales Director of Castell UK. Castell is a uh, manufacturer of IP intercom systems. All the products are made in France and uh, we uh, can, through various routes of purchasing, ideally through the distribution route of ProView, uh, you can get hold of our products. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Sure. Um, before we get going, um, I've got the chat window open if there's any technical issues while we're rolling today. And if you have any questions, just type them into the window and we'll answer them at the end where we'll have a bit of a Q&A session as well and an open floor, if you will. So what we're mainly going to go through today is uh, just a quick introduction to the Castell range, uh, what it looks like, how it works, things like that. Um, how easily it integrates into systems that you might already have in place, um, what sets them apart from the competition, um, and a few case studies where they're already successful, and how they comply with regulations as well. So what we're seeing, first of all, is a couple of more entry-level units from the Castell range. You've got um, on one side you can see sort of stainless steel and dark blue uh, metal with just one button and on the other side a brushed stainless steel model. They do offer different finishes of course and this one has a camera as well. You can see that um, little black circle there obviously with the camera and it, this one again is just one button. I think it's uh, just important to to emphasise that Castell has a, a full range of intercom stations, anything from a very, very basic stainless steel panel, no writing, just a button, uh, microphone hole and speaker grill, through to um, uh, an intercom station that incorporates a keypad uh, and an index screen as well, uh, and along the lines of multiple buttons as well, so anything from one button through to ten buttons. So there's a wide range of product for the applications that you have and each of those are either audio or audio and video and ultimately we also have two-way video as well but we will discuss that later on. As you can see uh, both of these are video stations, one on the left is a two-button intercom station, one on the right is a longer, physically longer device because there's more technology in there. That's a three button station. It's also giving you the opportunity to use an indexed screen. So you would program the device with the multiple users, tenants, uh, however the requirement is needed. And you'd use the up, up, down, up and down buttons to find, the, uh, find the, the name on the index and use the central button to call. Um, so again, just giving you a, a, a bit of a, an opportunity to show you the different types of functions of product that there are. Uh, now in the intercom world we have two sides. We have uh, what we call the sub side and we have the master side. Substations are what we were just showing you, which is anything from a single button station through to a ten button station. And then we have the master side, which is the controlling element. Uh, ideally these would be in a reception area security bunker or a security 24-hour manned location uh, or a concierge, just the, the, basically where the, 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 the controlling element, the answering takes place. Now depending on those environments depends on the type of intercom that you might want to use. So uh, what you're looking at at the moment on the left hand side is the Castell app which will work on, uh, on uh, Android or any other product through to uh, third-party grand screen phones which uh, are widely available. So it may be that you just want a handset uh, in a reception or a gatehouse area, you'd use the grand screen phone, that's very simple. You may say that you actually want a handset in the reception area, but equally you may have somebody who's walking around the site who may want to answer the, uh, the call on their, their mobile phone and they can do so, do so through the Castell app. Uh, 
this is a this is our um, the Castell answer, well, master station. Uh, it's a seven inch uh, color touch screen. Um, basically, when a call comes in, it indicates who's calling. So that's the identification of the substation. Uh, it's displayed. You then decide if you want to accept the call or not. You accept the call. And you see the video information. So you see somebody's face staring at you. You can therefore confirm that it's the person that you think it should be, or you can at least have a look at what who's, who's talk, you're talking to. Uh, and you're then able to open the door. So on the bottom left-hand side of the four buttons, there's a door icon. You press that, and that uh, triggers the relay, which would be at the substation end of the product. Thank you, Stuart. As you can see as well, um, obviously it can be mounted just on your desk. Um, like, say, if you've got a bit of a reception area, um, it just be on the desk there. Or it can be wall mountable as well if you want to go to a specific place i mean this could be next to the door if you really want to just have it there on the wall just as a permanent fixture um, for people inside to go and answer the door um, it has the callback functionality as well which means from this master station you can actually call back to one of the castell intercoms um, obviously if you've got three or four on site you can choose between them uh, see who's at each one if anyone and decide whether or not to let them in. And just an additional functionality there is if you've got multiple external stations, say you've got 10, 10 stations, um, and three of those get pressed at roughly the same time, uh, the screen would indicate the three calls, as in first calling, second calling, third calling. The operator has the opportunity to choose which one he wants to answer. So it may be a gate that's got a higher turnover of traffic, therefore they'll choose that gate over and above maybe a, another gate so that they can move the traffic through quicker. Uh, and as Gavin says, yeah, it's uh, vitally important in my world, which is um, high quality intercom, to be able to com communicate back to the calling station. I've seen a couple of questions already about how well they integrate. Um, they use the SIP protocol. This is all Castell intercoms that we sell. Um, just like all the rest of the brands that we do sell when it comes to intercoms. Um, they can be powered by a range of sources. You can have the local PSU or PoE, um, but a unique feature is also the PoE Plus. Um, a lot of the other brands we do aren't able to do that and they would just shut down. Whereas a Castell, it can detect that it is getting PoE Plus and then just take the power from there. Uh, just it, it, it's important to indicate that uh, all the products are PoE, but there is local PSU as well. Um, for those of you that are the installers, um, you'll be fully aware of you know the the, lo the problems that are caused by local power or non-local power. So you're given a good opportunity here to be able to solve that quite efficiently. It can communicate with um, quite a wide range of hosted and local PBX systems as well. We have an asterisk based system here which we have got it working with and Castell do also have their own hosted server um, which would enable it to communicate with your mobile phone, with, with the app on your mobile phone I should say. Wherever you actually are in the world we'll um, come on to that a bit later. I think it's just important again just to with regards to IP telephone systems as long as the IP telephone system is using an open SIP protocol any of the Castell products can effectively work on that. Be wary though that the video side um, so we are obviously dealing with telephones we're tending to talk about audio um, but there is a, a drive within the marketplace which is both the telephone and the uh, pro intercom world for my video intercoms to work on to telephone systems. There are a few characters out there who can accept our video codec, but the larger companies, the, the Cisco's of this world, um, there are conflicting, uh, conflicting uh, uh, video information there, so it doesn't actually work at this point. However, within the uh, research and development side, from certainly from Castell, it's uh, something we're trying to achieve so that you can use not just the audio, uh, have audio video uh, within the telephone system. Oftentimes um, it may not be such an issue talking to a video handset because you might have the video streaming into a central CCTV server for example 
and bring the image up on a computer monitor. This is why um, they've developed their intercoms to use RTSP um, for the video streaming. Um, this is a very open standard um, that does allow it to talk to quite a wide range of CCTV systems, home automation systems, things like that. They use the uh, SNMP protocol as well for alarm notifications and sort of to trigger cameras. Maybe you've got an overhead camera on the door. When Once the button is pressed, you may want to turn that camera on. That's what the SNMP does. It's worth noting as well that um, on other brands, these features are either licensed or not available at all. But if you buy one of the Castell units, you do get these features just straight out of the box. And you plug it in uh, and go, really. So what sets Castell apart? Uh, I mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation, professional intercom. Uh, with regards to that, professional intercom, as far as I see it, is that you should be able to hear it and they, uh, you should be able to be heard. Uh, that might sound very obvious, but if you're using an intercom on a post, which is, uh, which is on a post, which is uh, where a lorry may come in, um, you need to be able to make sure that the, that the, the volume sound pressure coming out of the intercom is enough for that lorry driver to hear what's going on. He's not going to switch his engine off so that he can uh, talk to the intercom. He wants to hear it. And it's the same with the microphone as well. Uh, the functionality of the microphone has to be a, a good standard to pick up the audio. Um, so we work in the world of professional intercom, so we're working normally in pretty in, uh, industrial, semi-commercial environments. So this isn't residential, this isn't homes. This is going to be you know, where there normally is noise, uh, could be exposed areas, could be dirty areas. Uh, so there are lots of different reasons uh, why we use the term professional intercom, because we're, high, we're, we're providing a high, higher functionality to provide the audio and the video now. As it says, all the units that uh, we manufacture are IP64. Um, being slightly flippant here, IP64 as opposed to an IP intercom, IP being Internet Protocol, IP64 in this case is with regards to water and moisture, uh, sorry, moisture and dust ingress. Um, so they're rated to uh, withstand a certain amount of water and a certain amount of um, dust and particles getting in and out. Uh, the IK07 is a standard for uh, registering how robust the product is, so it goes through a fairly onerous process of being bashed about really works out there in the uh, out there in the harsh world that we're working in uh, as it says on the bottom all the units can be flush or surface mounted uh, we have housings specifically designed to, to work with the with the product and we have additional size housings as well which we may use uh, for uh, harsher conditions and as mentioned you can um Obviously, you may want to. Excuse me, just just uh, excuse me while I while I'm mute and. All right, there we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, you can uh, mount this if you wanted to straight onto a wall, um, or you can reset it into the wall. Castell also do supply the stainless steel posts that you can use to say mount it at a different height for if you've got a car entrance or a pedestrian entrance or as mentioned before for HGVs obviously they'd be a lot higher so you would need a, a much higher post in order to do that where there might not necessarily be a wall available. They're able to manufacture bespoke units there's um, basically if you can think of it Castell can build it they do have that sort of attitude when it comes to uh, customization. So, so sorry, yeah, Gavin, yep. yeah so uh, as it says there, you may have a customer that wants their own logo on there, you may have a customer that doesn't like the, uh, the layout of the intercom station, so they may want buttons in a different place, they may want different types of buttons, and the, finish, the overall finish of the intercom station, we work in a normal sort of industrial grade stainless steel, which is where our you know, sets out as a standard. However, there are those that want brass, lacquered brass, bronze, anodized colors, and different 
uh, you know, different uh, stove enamel finishes. So we have the ability to do that. Um, just as a word of note on that, classify that as a special. Um, and that takes a little time to go through the process of being made. Uh, we obviously have to raise drawings that you guys can approve to your customer. Once they're all approved, we then go through the manufacturing process. Which normally that whole process, we would normally take about three weeks to do that. So it's worth bearing that in mind. We don't have brass and bronze on the shelf, uh, but we can get them made for you. They also have, um, as mentioned before, the mobile app um, works a little bit like a soft phone. It can take calls from the intercom, and these are audio and video calls. And this, it doesn't matter where the mobile actually is in the world. It doesn't have to be on the same local area network on the Wi-Fi, for example. It can be over a 3G connection. The intercom could be in your office in London. You could be in, I don't know, France, for example. Um, on the 3G over there and you can still see who, who is at the door and talk to them, I either let them in or, or not, uh, as the case may be. Um, and, yeah. and you can call them back, so you can, you, you, you can. can use your onboard, you can use your app on your device to call back to that. So again, if you want to just check that person is allowed into or given access to that building, uh, you can then call them back by the app. Um, obviously this is subject to the network performance, um, audio is fine. Uh, video performance can be, um, how should we say, uh, well, effective. effective <laughs> yeah. Um, so you could you, you could be working perfectly well and cracking, um, but it could also be you know it could be compromised. But that's not my worry. That's the network people. It's worth noting as well if if you don't have your own PBX on site to actually support this sort of feature, or you don't use a hosted service, Castell do actually have their own. Um, where you can obviously sign up for that and that would be how the intercom talks to your mobile. Yeah, so for a one-off license cost you would uh, register your device uh, and that's, that's an ongoing service uh, which you've paid for. As it says at the bottom as well, you can have the two-way video. Um, so if you want the person who's visiting you to actually see who they're speaking to, that, then that is an option as well. Uh, now I'll give you an example of that. Um, we recently did a we were recently working with an installer to provide intercom to a school for um, uh, deaf kids. Uh, we actually met the operators of the school, and they said, "Wouldn't it be great if we could sign language from our reception to the entrances to the school?" So using two-way video, we were able to provide that. So you can effectively, well, yeah, you can picture this in your own mind, um, but the, you know, the, the kids would come to school, uh, if they were denied access for any reason, um, they'd make a call, they were able to see the receptionist and they were able to communicate with them. Um, but subsequently, so that was for a school for the deaf, we've now done this uh, on several occasions where it's been used in um, uh, clean room environments where they have to confirm um, the confirm with each other that they're in the right um, physical attire coming in and out of those uh, locations. So it's uh, something that's a normal function for us. It's not a special. It's not an extra. Um, there are standard stations with cameras and standard stations with the the, the screen in there as well. Uh, we were talking earlier about posts and specials or uh, special manufactured intercoms. Uh, on the right hand side you'll see that there are various posts there. Uh, these are all made of a high standard stainless steel. Uh, they're uh, anything from a 1.2 meter pedestrian height through to uh, I think it's 1.6 or 1.8 meter dual height. So that's for goods vehicles and normal cars. Uh, there's an angled post there as well. So depending on where the curb is or how far away you want the intercom station, that helps. These are fitted to the ground by a effectively a cage uh, which you would sink into the ground with four bolts that stick through uh, and the posts bolt onto those. So that gives you an idea of the posts that we can supply. And then on the left hand side you've got a couple of special made intercom stations. Uh, so they'll be in a brass finish by the look of it, one being surface and one being flush. The one on the left hand side has a uh, space that's been made available for an access control reader. So as long as your access control reader isn't too big, we can normally host that. You mount it in the rear 
So you have a combined nice looking device rather than a separate intercom with a, a, a separate reader uh, located. It is worth emphasising that actually about the access control. If you have already a system in the building and you want to use just the intercom side of the Castell products, but still have the card readers from this different system, for example, Paxton, then obviously as long as, as it's not too big, as mentioned, it can be mounted behind that black square there and it would still integrate into the Paxton system as normal. Yeah, and just to, to add to that, on the within our standard range, so the, 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 the intercoms you're looking at at the moment are bespoke made, but within the standard range, uh, there are a couple of intercom stations with space for uh, readers. So you don't have to worry about going through the special process. They're, they're sitting on the shelf, effectively, with space for those readers. So we discussed the app, so uh, uh, in, in, ingeniously enough, Gavin's uh, got it all working, and uh, here's an example, so I'll Gavin explain. Yeah, this one is um, just outside our front door, so technically you could say I was still in the building, um, however, you will look at the top there and see that it's running off the 4G instead of the building's Wi-Fi. Um, this is just uh, an example of uh, how it can work. Um, this was just a one button with camera that we used. Um, my, my colleague there pressed the button, sort of said hello, and then I could obviously see him on my screen. And you can see the, the top of my head there as well. So you can obviously see yourself. And if it was the two-way video intercom as well, that is the image that, uh, that my colleague there would have been seeing as well on the screen. And again, this would all run over the, as long as the 4G or 3G network is capable of, of that sort of bandwidth, then, then it would be doable. So uh, where is Castell successful? Uh, Castell is successful mainly in uh, environments where we talk of campuses. Um, campuses could be you know, one particular site with multiple buildings, but it could be multiple sites. Uh, such as universities, etc., which are uh, ever present now, taking over you know cities, etc., where they're putting in lots of taking over old buildings, etc. But they're centrally running their functions, um, so they could be running the access control, the CCTV, and the intercom back into a control room. So, as it says on the list there, we've got examples which are hospitals, schools, and universities, and they have they may have a multiple use for intercom. So, not just getting in and out of the door. We're talking about gates, we're talking about barriers, we're talking about turnstiles, uh, we're talking about parking facilities, so it could be pay on foot machines, uh, it could be help points, uh, certainly in universities or where there's a large amount of people uh, walking around, they may want help points so that they can feel reassured about walking around the estate, etc. And then, yes, there are the getting through doors, so you know, you can imagine there's a extreme amount of intercoms used in prisons and uh, more so in hospitals now where um, unfortunately uh, we've taken it for granted that we can walk around hospitals that shouldn't and isn't the case nowadays uh, it should be that you can't get onto wards you need to get in through a, a good process and historically you've just put a just a simple intercom from one side of the door to the other uh, expecting uh, one of the staff to traipse all the way up the, uh, through the ward and then answer your call and say, yes, you can come in. But if you take the advantage of the types of functions that Castell has, the call could go through to the nurse. It could go through to the nurse's iPad that she's using, or the call could be forwarded through to the control room, and the control room would take control of that situation. So creating a much more secure and a much more process-led um, intercom station part of the security package. Um, there are case studies available on the Castell website uh, covering off... Uh, Lancashire Police Headquarters, um, again, very, very large um, campus with uh, lots of different facilities uh, wanting to be centrally controlled. Uh, same, same process going on in the Natural History Museum uh, down in London. Most people only ever see the public entrances. You can imagine something like that. Dozens and dozens of goods entrances and safe locations or locations that are restricted. Uh, we worked recently with um, one of the major integrators on a, an emergency call system for Transport for London. And um, we, we're working with Aldi, uh, who, uh, as everybody will be aware, are very 
aggressive in building new shops or new supermarkets, but uh, not just the supermarkets, also distribution hubs as well. Uh, those distribution hubs are highly controlled environments uh, and they're using Castell Intercom on any of the new sites that are being built currently, um, mainly because of the flexibility of the product and the ability for the product to go straight into their telephone system to go back to the Aldi uh, big headquarters where they can uh, where they can carry on running 24, hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, with regards to compliance, uh, as you will all be aware, um, with regards to the DDA, um, the, most of the intercom stations that are on the market should have you know, different functions, but those functions should be that anybody with a disability should be able to uh, be, being that they are either hearing impaired or sight impaired, um, you should give them the best experience. The best experience is that when you press the button, uh, you hear a tone to tell you something's happening, uh, and you see a light shows you something is happening. The same thing happens when a call is actually in place. So when, it, when the call is connected, we're told that the call is connected, and an LED tells you, indicates that the call's in place. And when the door is uh, released uh, with the Castell product, it tells you that the door is being opened. And again, gives you an LED to indicate that, uh, that the door is open. So you can you know, grab the door, push the door, and uh, all of the intercoms are fitted with a loop induction uh, product so that uh, if you're using a hearing aid with the T-switch, uh, if you s it's about 80 centimetres, it will work out to, which is about the normal distance you would expect to be standing from an intercom and talking to somebody. It's worth noting as well that this is a standard feature on all Castell intercoms. Uh, other brands we do, obviously these features are available, but you do have to buy, say, an extra module or stick to a certain sort of model. Um, in order to do that, whereas Castell, you don't need to worry about if I buy this model with this feature, will it do it? It will, is the answer. Uh, and the slide you're looking at at the moment just gives you that uh, reassurance. Uh, on the left-hand side, those are the three pictograms. So the left-hand side, the very left-hand side, is the ringing pictogram. The central one is your in-communication pictogram, and the one on the right is door open uh, pictogram. And again, there are tones. So when those LEDs light up, there are tones telling what to do. And just uh, those are pro programmable tones as well. So if you wanted a different language or a regional dialect, you just use a, a wave file and load those in accordingly. And that goes the same with the tones and the ringing tones. There's a multiple choice of ringing tones and or their wave files, so you can put those in. And on the right hand side, it's just giving you an idea of the pictograms and the layout of the screen. So the screen has, as you'd expect, Castell on there. But again, that's programmable. So if your client wanted their own logo in there, they can blow that in. Three buttons there are up and down for scrolling through the index, and the central button is a ringing button. So just to summarise on this uh, range of intercoms then, um, as you've seen, they are very good-looking intercoms. Um, they wouldn't look out of place in, uh, well, there's very few places where they would look out of place. Um, as mentioned, the they're, they're customisable. You can... Obviously, speak to us and uh, Castell um, if you want different layouts or different finishes, things like that. All of them are robust intercoms, highly vandal resistant, uh, dust resistant, of course, water resistant. Using SIP and the other protocols, RTSP, SNMP, they can easily integrate into many third-party systems. Uh, Instead of, well, obviously, as well as just phones, you've obviously got your CCTV systems and alarm systems, and they are compliant with um, disability regulations as well. Um, so what we're going to do, we've had a few questions through um, throughout the webinar, so I'm just going to, or Stuart or myself will answer answer these. Um, so I think the first one, yeah. With the apps and tablets, like, can we use third-party SIP providers? Um, well, the, an the answer is um, yes, you can, of course. It's any hosted SIP service or an on-site PBX service. Um, as long as the system works with SIP, then then you will be able to, obviously, as mentioned, Castell do, do their own service as well. Um, on a hosted basis um, for answering phone. 
I'm between the intercom, sorry, on your phone from wherever you are in the world if you don't have that sort of system in place. Can they be used with Samsung phone systems by using an IP extension? Um, I assume that's um, one of these Samsung phone systems that may not ne necessarily be based on IP, but as long as it is able to support it, there, then yes. Can you separately alter the microphone volume and the speaker volume? Uh, well, the, the answer to that question is yes, and just to give you an idea, each of the devices are, is a web device. Um, so you basically go and find the device on the network, let yourself in through the, uh, the admin process. Uh, you then go in and you can change a lot of the functionality. So speaker and microphone, you can turn them up, you can turn them down. Um, there's a, a sort of a myth out there that if you turn the microphone and the speaker up, it'll be louder and more sensitive. Um, you have to balance how that works. It has a lot to do with the environment that it's working in. Uh, on top of that, though, we also have um, noise cancelling technology in there, and we also have echo cancelling technology in there as well, which you can enable. So all of the functionality, um, the call forwarding, um, the changing the IP addresses, um, the, the tones, how the relays uh, on board are used, are all programmable via the programming process. Um, and as I say, you just log in. So there's no license to buy, there's no software to buy, it's all embedded into the product. Okay, if anyone's any more questions now, what I'm just going to do is um, unmute everyone. Um, so if you'd rather ask us than type it in, you can do so. Um, otherwise, if there aren't any, then as you can see on there, any that you think of after the webinar um, can be directed to myself and my email address is on there. But we do have a couple more. Excellent. Um, is the video stream embedded into SIP? Yes. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> yep, I, it is. Um, if you need to know more, uh, if, if it gives a bit of information, we can we can give you more on that. But yes, it is embedded into that. As long as the phone system can support it, it will work. If this has been used locally, will this still be the case? Um, by locally, do you mean if everything is handled within, say, the building, for example? If we drag that out, are you, are you suggesting that the difference between a, a physical IPPA, IPPBX and a hosted? I believe so, yeah. I think this does refer to a, a local based system. So the answer would be yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, locally or locally or globally, as long as you're happy with that. Non support video from this unit. Um, that, that's something I would have to check on. That's uh, probably more of a stop question than, than Castell. There are one or two character. There are one or two manufacturers that will support the video. So I know for a fact that 3CX does. Hmm. Um, and as Gavin says, um, possibly the thing to do, especially with the flexibility the guys here at Proview have, is to ask that question. Uh, they would normally go in, check it get it running or not get it running in the case uh, and let you know. Um, but it's certainly worth asking that question uh, for these guys to test on. It is one certainly to find out. Um, which is more, uh, yeah, that's not if they do support the uh, motion JPEG protocol. Um, so as long as, as, as long as the system supports it, then, then yeah, I imagine it would. But as I say, we will, um, we check in with some on that and uh, move forward from there. So I think that covers us for our what we thought was going to be 20 minutes. It's turned out to be so. over 30, <laughs> 30 minutes, which is great. So uh, I would say thank you very much for your time uh, for everybody that's listening. Um, if you need to know more specifically with regards to Castell, uh, www.castell.co.uk website gives you quite a bit of information. Otherwise, talk to the ProView guys. Uh, if they can't answer it, they'll talk to me. Um, but yeah, uh, please get hold of us and uh, we'll help you out how we can. So All thank right. you. Thank you very much. Um, I'll email answers to these last couple of questions out. Um, I'll email you when we find out, Neil, and uh, 
Rob, I will um, email you this afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Cheers.